So that's the end of the So What Challenge. So how do you feel about yourself? Can you please rate from a scale 1 to 10? Uh, I started off, I rated myself as an 8 to 9. Yeah. Uh, halfway through, I started rating off at a 4 and towards the end, the hand stitch, I just went on to 0, I think. Not negative? Yeah, almost negative. Almost negative. Yeah, yeah okay, so you talk about your hand stitching, uh. where we should review how the outcome looks okay. like. Okay, you want to count? Alright, 1, Eight, two, 2, 3. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it's almost the um, same. Almost what are these? What are those? Yeah, uh, obviously there's a lot of um, rooms for improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but definitely through like my verbal instructions, uh -huh. at least you tried to seal the edge up. Yeah. Okay, so now we will flip over and we'll see if it turns out okay. nicer than what it is on the inside. So just push all the seam allowance out. And you have a nice little shoe here. Oh, wow. I'm wow. for yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How's it? What do you think? Uh... Obviously, it's very different. I think yeah. it's for different sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as I was going through along the videos, uh, no, not the videos, we're doing your instructions, mm. um, it was quite difficult to verbalize um, in my head and imagine, I mean, visualize what yeah. you were saying. Uh, but I think, so, of course, for the viewers at home, if you can look at what she was actually doing, follow hers, of, of mm. course, not mine, I think it would be much easier. Yeah. Definitely. So, see what you were so doing. with some visual aids, yeah, you definitely. definitely will be able to catch and you won't end up with something like that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really a good try. Not, not What's bad. more important is really you just kept trying, you're very patient with um, the instructions as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I really want to thank you to, yeah. to be here with me and then, you know, completing this challenge. And yeah. No problem. So thanks for having me here today at Fashion Maker Space. I at least learned how to make a booty today. Yes. So for more, uh, you know, unique pattern causes, you can also check out our channel, Fashion Maker Space. Mm. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So with your baby booties done now, we are going to move on to your mittens. So for your mittens, you should already have four pieces of your main material cut out and also four pieces of your lining cut out. So we're going to place the main fabric aside first because we are going to mark out the notches for your lining material. So with one side of the lining facing up, make sure that the wrong side is facing up on you because we are going to place this pattern on the wrong side of the lining. Next, with your fabric marker, watch out for the notch and we are going to mark out one notch and two notch onto the wrong side of the lining. One, two, three, four. So this is for one set of it. Now move on to the other set, mark it out as well. You don't have to mark on four, four of the pieces, you just have to mark out on one and the other. So make sure that you're accurate. So next what we're going to do is, we will have to place the right side of the lining onto the right side of the other piece, face them down together. Right side facing right side. And then from the edge, we're going to start our stitch. Go all the way down to the first notch and you will have to reverse. Then move on to the second notch, we will start our stitch again. All the way, we're going to sew the U to the next notch over here and reverse your stitch. Finally, start your stitch again at the last notch Go all the way up to the edge and end. So you should see that the entire thing is sewn except for this area here, which is the notches you made. This is for you again to create the tunnel as you're going to insert your elastic. So do it for one side of the mitten and then move on to the other, right side to right side. Start again. Okay, now let's move on to sewing the lining for your mittens. If your fabric is slightly softer, you can actually attach it with some pins to secure so the fabrics do not shift as you are sewing. So for this lining material, I have changed the thread for the upper thread and the lower thread to be of same colour. If you want, you can also change the top thread and the bottom thread to be of matching colour for your main material. So I'm going to start sewing from the edge to the first notch, stop my stitch, Start from the second notch all the way around the U-shape till this next notch and end. And again, start from here all the way up. 
So when you're sewing this, go ahead and sew at 1 cm seam allowance. So at the top here, I will start sewing. Remember to reverse. And then watch out for the notch. We are going to stop at the notch. And remember to reverse as well. Then start from this edge. Now make sure you start at the 1 cm mark. Because that's the seam allowance for this mitten. Continue down. As you are turning at the corners, remember to pivot. So pivot at the curved corners for you to create a nicer and smoother curve. Remove the pins as you move along and then watch out for the next notch. So once you have reached the next notch, you have to reverse it again. And then finally, start at the last notch. Okay, and this is what you should be seeing. A gap on the left and another gap on the right side. And now you would have to do the same for the other side. Repeat your steps. So you should be done with sewing the lining. Make sure to leave a tunnel again for you to insert your elastic. Then, take your main fabric. You should have four pieces. And we are going to make sure that your fabric's right side is facing down onto the right side. And go ahead, do the same as what you did for the lining, except that now you don't have to mark out any notch anymore. So then, you have to start sewing from the edge all the way around the U-shape back to the end here. Again, make sure that the right side of the material is facing the right side. But because this fabric is batik, so we don't have a right or wrong side. You can just choose any of the sides for you to sew. So complete for one side and then move on to the other and sew along the U-shape from one edge to the other. Okay, so let's move on to the main fabric now. You can choose to change your upper thread and the lower thread to a matching thread that suits the main fabric. Then again, pick out your pins if you find that the fabric is not very stable. And then you, uh, if let's say you're afraid that it might shift a lot, you can also pin it down in place. So then I'm going to start sewing from this edge all the way around the U-shape back to the other edge here without sewing any, without leaving any gap here. So then, same as what you did for your lining, sew at 1cm from the edge. Remember to reverse at the end. Okay. Then repeat the same thing for the other side. Alright, once you have your main fabric and your lining, first we will have to take our fabric scissors and start snipping the edges where you see curves. So when you have a curve, when you try to turn it around, you would tend to see that the curve areas would have a lot of tension going on. So you want to make sure that as you are turning over, you create a very nice curve shape, you would have to do some snipping. So as you are snipping this area at the bottom, especially the U shape, Go ahead and take your fabric scissors. Make sure that as you are snipping, snip close to the stitch line. So leave about 0.1 cm away from the stitch and then move on to the next. So what I give for every snip is about a 1 cm gap. So continue doing all around till you reach the other end here. You don't have to snip for the straight edges. So make sure that your hands are stable and cut. If let's say you are not very confident with this, you can also cut half and start snipping inwards just so that you reach 0.1 cm before the stitch line. 
So what happens if you snip um, not enough? Then that means that when you try to turn it over, it wouldn't be as smooth as the stitch line again. So this is for your lining. Do it the same for your main fabric. One set and the other set. Once you are done with snipping all the curved edges around your mittens, we are going to start with one side of the mittens first. So flip, so flip either the lining or the main fabric over onto the right side because we're going to insert this into the gap over here. So the idea of this is to make sure that the right side of the lining is facing the right side of the main material. So if you find that the bulb is slightly thicker on this edge, you can also trim it down to 0.5 cm, which is half of the seam allowance that you sewn earlier, like that. So I will do the same for the lining as well, because when I flip over, I found out that the seam allowance is slightly bulkier as, than usual. So if your fabric is thinner and you don't find it too thick, you don't have to do this step. And then flip either the lining or the main material over. So push out the corners very nicely so you realize that the curved edges will be smooth after you've done the snipping. So with the right side of the lining facing you, we are going to insert it into the main fabric. And there you have it, right side facing the right side. Okay. So right now, at this step, we are going to make sure that the seams align very nicely. If you would like to make sure that the seams really sit very properly, you can also iron open the seam for your main fabric and also iron open the seam for your lining material, just so that you distribute the bulk and the seams can meet up nicely. Right, so once I've ironed out the seam for the main fabric and the lining, that's when you can see that the seam is open up nicely and that's when you can match it up. So before sewing this entire edge around, I will take my fabric marker just to mark a one quarter gap on the top because you're going to start sewing from the one quarter all the way around to the seam. So leaving a one quarter gap at the top, that's when you can flip the right side out. So what you can do is simply fold this mitten into half, mark this edge, and this would be your sewing point. So start sewing from this point all the way around, attaching the both fabrics at the edge till you reach the other side of your side seam. So then, after you've done the marking, I would also like to use some pins to secure the side seams together. Just so that when you flip it out, they will match up as well. So right here, match up your side seams and go ahead and pin it down. So as you're pinning, I would suggest that you pin it on the inside of the rim here. This way. So what do I mean by inside? Instead of pinning it on the outside here, pin it from the inside. This way. So as you're sewing, you will realize that you're sewing in a circle like that. You don't have to keep flipping to check if you have already sewn onto the bottom layer of your mitten. Then move on to the other side of your seam. Make sure that they match up nicely. Open up your seams again. Then pin it from the inside. Here. For this last part, you're not going to pin because I'm going to start sewing from this edge. Again, all the way to this seam here. So right now, I'm going to start from the inside. For this, you're going to sew it. 1 cm seam allowance. Starting from the center, make sure that you reverse your stitch. As you go, remove your pins so that you can check. It will be good that you can also lift up your footer so you can really align it nicely. Make sure that your lining material and your, and your main fabric is aligned before you sew them up. For mittens that are smaller, you will have to take more time and 
patients to align this edge. Align the top edge all the way around at 1 cm. And then remember to stop at this side of the seam. So when you are reaching the seam, reverse your stitch. Alright. So now you should be left with a little gap here for you to flip the right sides out. Do the same for the other side of the mitten. So once you've sewn the top, you'll be left with a gap on the top side, just a quarter of the entire rim. Then from the gap, flip the whole mitten out, and that's where you can see the right side of it. So at this stage, as you can also push out the corners by just twisting the edge like that rubbing it against each other and that's how you get a very smooth corner. So then at this point, this is your main fabric which means the lining should be pushed inside of your main fabric like that. There we go. Ta-da! Almost done. And then what do we do with this gap? First of all, we would have to iron down the seam here just to make sure that they sit very nicely. So you can also roll the edge this way, so you can get the most out of the seam. We will try to make sure that the seams all match up. Towards here, push the seam allowance inside. And this is the part where you need to iron. Then bring it to the ironing station and iron this entire thing flat. Do it the same for the other side of the mitten. Let's go! Right, so now bring it to the iron. Make sure that you push out all the seam allowance at the bottom edge to align the top very nicely. So when you're ironing this, you will want to make sure that the lining doesn't pick out longer than your main fabric. So what you have to do is, at this side, just simply push it down, leaving a 0.1 cm gap all around. So what you should be looking at is that the main fabric is slightly peeking out of your lining, just so that from this, right side, you can't see where the lining is. So once you've established that, go ahead and iron it down. At this corner where the gap is, just make sure that you push the seam allowance down and that the lining does not show more than your main fabric. Once you've got that, then iron it down again. Alright. See all around, it's just a nice 0.1 cm that's slightly higher than your lining. And then do it the same for the other side. Alright, so once you have already ironed it very nicely, I have also changed the upper thread and the lower thread to match the main fabric and the lining. So in this case, we would like to sew from the inner rim just so that it goes in a loop like that again. You don't have to worry what goes underneath or you might have sewn onto the other side. So what I will do is, instead of starting at the edge here, go ahead and start your stitch slightly before the seam. And then you don't have to reverse it as you move all the way around back to here, overlap over again. So your seam should start from here and end over here and that's how you overlap the stitch. So as you overlap the stitch, you will create a very nice and seamless edge rather than having a back stitch here and a back stitch here. So as you're closing the gap, you're going to sew from the edge here at 0.5 cm all around. So let me start from one side of the seam. Make sure that the edge is aligned to the right edge of your footer, which is just along the oval shape here. Start slightly before that. And I don't have to reverse this side. Okay. 
keep a lookout for the other side of the seam and that's where you're going to end your stitch. So as you can see, right here, I started way before the seam and I'm going to go past this area overlap to the other end where I mark the notch. So what you can do is you can just mark out a 0.5 cm on either side of your seam. Make sure that when you're doing this step, overlap on the same stitch and that's how you can create a secure stitch end. Then once you're done, bring the needle up, pull it out. There you go. You have a very seamless edge here without having any back stitch on one side and on the other side. 0.5 cm all around and repeat for the other side. You may also notice that I changed the bottom thread and the upper thread and that's how you get matching thread for the main fabric and also for the lining. Right, so once you're done with this, we are going to sew another 1.5 cm from the edge from the top of your mittens to create that tunnel for you to insert your elastic. So clean up the threads first. And then, from the edge, align to the 1.5 cm marking and sew all around, repeating the same technique for this. So start on one side of the seam, make sure you start further and then end on this side as well. As you're sewing this, go bit by bit, turn the entire mitten as you move along. I will also push all the seam allowance out to make sure that the lining is sitting very flat with the main fabric. Now move on to the other side, make sure that you trim all the unwanted threads. And start sewing from the edge, 1.5 cm. Alright, so almost reaching almost the end of your mittens, we are going to insert the elastic into the tunnel of this. So you by now you should have already created the tunnel for you to insert the elastic. Now take one mitten and one elastic, bring the elastic around the wrist of your mitten. This way. So this is the length for now, temporarily. Now take your fabric scissors and cut it off. Normally, your elastic will be shorter than what it is now. So that would depend on the size of your baby's wrist. But for now, we are going to take the safety pin and pin it at one end of your elastic. So this is for you to bring it through the tunnel and fit it in. So you would see that on one end of your stitch, this is where the opening is. And then on the other side of the tunnel, that's where you seal the opening up. So bring the elastic in to the opening and try to bring it all around. So you realize that for your mittens, you have two tunnels. You can start on either side of it. But make sure that your safety pin comes out from the same hole that you brought it in. So wiggle it slightly. So let's say your elastic is cut slightly shorter than what you did previously. Sometimes you might risk the elastic going in as you're trying to pull this out. Which is why at the start we can give it more allowance and when it comes to sewing, that's when you can adjust to the size of your baby's wrist. So coming out of the other side of your tunnel, make sure that you're coming out from the same hole that you inserted your elastic into. So give it a bit of tap to lessen the tension and we'll keep going. So try to push this out. 
So for this, I use a small safety pin and that would really help you in pushing out the elastic at the end. So you can also pull open this tunnel here just to get to the opening. Sometimes when it gets stuck into the seam allowance, just try to wiggle through until you get the head of the safety pin out. Yay! So then, you may remove the, the safety pin. And there you have it. Almost done. So we'll bring this to sew. And this is where you can decide how wide, how tight, or how loose your cuff should be at this point. And then do this same thing for the other side of the mitten. Alright, so towards the end, now what you have to do is decide what is the circumference of your baby's wrist and attach this elastic together. So what we would do is, normally we wouldn't pull it too tight. If not, it will be very uncomfortable for the baby. So for example, if I want it at this point here, you can actually just hold down to this edge and then try to open and stretch out this elastic. So then where, your, where the edge meets your hand, your fingers, that's where you can see this is the size or the circumference of a baby's wrist. So let's say if you find that it's a bit too loose, go ahead and tighten it. So what you can do is, at this finger point, right, go ahead and take a chalk to mark that edge. So this would be the line that you're going to sew. If let's say this line is slightly bigger and you want to make it smaller, you can just go in and mark it out first. So let's say I'm going to mark at this position. I will make sure that I pull this elastic over so you have more room to sew. Then align these two elastic together, bring it to the machine and start to sew. You don't have to change the stitch length for this. Just make sure that as you start here, reverse back, we're going to go to and fro four times to make sure that it's more secure. Bring your needle down. I'm going to go forward three steps, then move forward. This point. Then you can trim off all the threads that you have. I would also suggest for you to pull the threads before you start cutting them. Sometimes you might find that there's a bit of loop that's going on at the back. So make sure that you pull everything nicely and top before you trim your threads away. So at this point now, I can stretch this elastic out and it should end at that point that you stop your stitch. So then now you can gauge if this is comfortable for your baby. Again, not too tight, but if you want to go a bit tighter, you can definitely sew closer to the edge. So I'm going to try that. So maybe another 0 0.5 cm away, like that. And then... Bring your needle down and sew it. Reverse back up. Make sure that you go to and fro four times to secure the stitch better. Take it up. Pull it up. Pull the threads first. So you don't end up with any loose knots. Alright, then cut it off. So you can definitely adjust as you move along. If let's say this is the circumference that you like, this way, then you can go ahead and cut this area off. So take your fabric scissors. And cut it 0.5 cm away from your stitch line. Like that. So what do you do with this edge? You can simply stretch your elastic as you move along. It, that knot will start to go in. So you'll start to move along the tunnel. Just keep distributing it. So 
sometimes if you find that the knot is stuck, just give it a bit of push using your tweezers or any sharp point there and continue pulling it. So this is to prevent that edge from being too thick when it's stuck to the seam. And there you have it. One side of the mitten done. Then continue for the other side as well. And your mitten is done. And we are done with the baby booties and mittens. If Clifford can do it, so can you. This would be a very good gift or even as a starter project if you're just a beginner at sewing. So if you like what you see, do check out our Fashion Meter Space videos and we'll see you soon. Bye!